in a galaxy far, far away. Some people have made this awesome title animation here inside Adobe Premiere Pro. And you know what, guys? I'm actually a Premiere Pro Jedi. I'm not supposed to tell you this, but uh, I can teach you how to make this. So let's dive right into it. What's up, you guys? Jordy here for Cinecom.net, and today is a super exciting tutorial. No, seriously, I'm always saying this, but this time it really is super exciting. Look what we are going to create. We're going to create this awesome 3D text here inside Adobe Premiere Pro. Everything is done in Premiere, by the way. We are not using any other third-party plugins. Just some awesome creativity to create this cool animation. This was inspired by the latest trailer that I saw, The Last Jedi Star Wars film. I'm really looking forward to see that film and on the end of that trailer you can see some sort of this animation here. But that was probably done in After Effects and it's also more convenient to create something like this in After Effects. But uh, where's the excitement? Let's do this in Premiere. Let's get started guys. I'm going to create a new sequence here by clicking here in the bottom down below. Say sequence and give that any name you'd like. Let's call it Cinecom Wars. Press OK. And uh, let me just drag this sequence here from the example in that example folder. I'm also going to close it right here. And the first thing that I want to do is create the text. So I'm going to go back to that new item button, but what you can also do is press Ctrl T, which is the short key to create a new text layer inside Premiere. For the Mac users, that is Command T. Press that and give that any name, for example, the C of the first letter that we're going to create. Press OK. Now, because we are going to turn around each letter, we have to make them in a separate title file. So this one here is going to hold the C, and you can take any kind of font that you like. For example, just some RDL doesn't matter. You can also search for what uh, Star Wars is using in their animations, uh, what kind of font that they were using. I'm going to go for a little bit more bold here so that we can see the 3D effect a bit better. I'm going to increase the size of that just a tiny bit. And now comes the very important part. You want to make sure that each letter sits in the exact middle of your title file. And you can do that by pressing these two buttons right here to center it up horizontally and vertically. And once that is done, we are going to create a new title file from this one. You can do that very easily by clicking here on this button here in the top left, which says new title based on the current title. Click on that. You can give that another name. For example, the next one is going to be the I from Cinecom. Press OK, and you can see now here in your project panel that a new title file has created. So you can just change the C here to that I, but every time that you do so, make sure to center it back up. And we want to continue doing that until you have your desired sentence or words. There you go. This was the last letter, Cinecom. And uh, to be a bit organized here, I'm going to create a folder and name that letters. And just put in all the letters in that folder. Like that. And then what you want to do is drag all your letters to the timeline. So that's C. Then we have the I. And make sure that they are on top of each other. There you go. And now we are going to play with the position so that we can actually see the words here instead of all the letters on top of each other. So I'm going to start with the middle letter. We are sure that this one here is in the middle. So I'm just going to leave it where that one is. The N, on the other hand, I'm going to click on that one. It's going to sit next to the E, which is somewhere right here. Then for the C, we're going to select that one and position that to the right side. Then select the O and just kind of continue doing that until every letter here sits correctly. Something like that. And of course, you can choose the kind of distance that you want to have between the letters yourself. Also, it's not so important that your word isn't exactly in the middle because afterwards, on the end of this tutorial, we are going to nest everything and kind of reposition everything to the correct spot. All right, now let's add that 3D animation to it. We're going to head over to Effects and search for Basic 3D or just 3D, and you'll find it right here. Drag that to your first letter, and I'm going to scroll a bit down here, and we're going to animate the swivel animation right here. And I'm going to start here on 90 degree, where I kind of don't see the letter. And uh, create a keyframe for that. Make sure that you are in the beginning of your sequence. Go a little bit further in time and make that zero. So now you will see that it kind of will turn from 90 degrees back to zero. And it's turning beautifully on its own axis. And that's because we have aligned this letter in the middle of the title file. If you wouldn't have done this, this letter would turn somewhere right here in the middle somewhere. So that's why it was so important that we aligned that in the middle. So I'm going to right click here on the last keyframe here as well and say ease in. Make sure you always do that. Your animations will look a lot smoother if you do so. 
So it will kind of smooth out as it ends its animation. And once you've done with that, you can kind of select the basic 3D effect in here, hit Ctrl C or Command C for the Mac users to copy this effect, then select all the other letters and just press Ctrl V. And now all the letters should also be animated like that. And this is already a pretty cool effect as these letters are turning around their own axis, but we don't really have this 3D kind of feeling. They are still flat letters. So what I wanna do now is to go back to my project panel and kind of create an adjustment layer to kind of extrude these letters. So click back here in the new item button and select the adjustment layer, press OK. And you wanna drag that adjustment layer on top of all your letters and then select that adjustment layer, head over to your effects library and you're going to search for drop shadow. And this effect here is going to make sure that we can kind of extrude this. Scroll a bit down here. As for the shadow color, we are going to take something grayish, not really white, because we can then still not really see the extrusion, because we do have to remember here that we are not working in a 3D environment. You will see later in this tutorial that we are going to bump into some more problems uh, because it's not really 3D. We're going to fake 3D here. So take some kind of a grayish color or something like this, press OK, and uh, the opacity can be 100%. And we're going to make sure that the softness sits at zero and that the direction this is also very important here, that the direction is at 90 degrees. This way, the shadow is kind of pointing to the right side. And we can see that if we increase the distance here, this is going to be our extrusion right here. If we change that direction, you will see that the extrusion will kind of be wrong. So you want to make sure that that's on 90 degrees. Now, this is not really an extrusion. We just have like two flat layers. So we are going to duplicate this drop shadow effect a couple of times. And for the first extrusion depth, we're going to pick one for the distance, one pixel. And uh, then we can kind of close this drop shadow effect and uh, say Ctrl C and Ctrl V to copy and paste this effect. Open the second one and we're going to change the distance now to the double amount, which is two. And then let's head over to the last one here. Ctrl C, Ctrl V. Open that up and change that to Four. And now we have this like very small kind of extrusion, which is enough to kind of have that uh, 3D effect to it. Let me just zoom in a bit more on these titles. You can see it very well here that we kind of have this 3D effect. You know, this extrusion kind of stays there. In the beginning, it looks very good. We have a real extrusion, but as these layers kind of turn, the extrusion stays there. And that's again, because we are actually working in an illusion. We are working in a 2D environment here. So we are also going to animate that extrusion so that it kind of turns with the letter. And that can easily be done by also animating the extrusion depth. So from the beginning here, I'm going to create a keyframe for the distance here for all the drop shadows. So that's also this one, the distance, and the last one as well, the distance right here. Then head to the ending of your animation, somewhere right here, and then change all the distances to zero. So also for that one and for the last one as well. So now the distance will also kind of close in and we have a more feeling that uh, these letters are in a 3D space. And now we can close all of these effects in here. All right, guys, so this is already the first step of making this awesome 3D animation here with the text. Those who remember, we kind of made a similar tutorial years back, I believe it's like four years ago, um, that kind of covered the same techniques. Now the next step is to add lighting to it. We're going to add like this lighting effect on the sides of these letters and also on the extrusion. And this is going to be pretty hard because again, we don't have a 3D environment. With After Effects, you can just kind of create this virtual light. But again, where's the excitement? And Premiere is more awesome. It's more of a challenge. And there's one problem that we're facing here. If we are going to add like some sort of a color, because you know, in the title of the last Jedi uh, trailer, the letters kind of had this, uh, a reddish lighting on the extrusion side and just some normal white lighting on the left side. So if we would add like a tint or some kind of a lighting effect to it, it will be applied to everything because again, we are working in a 2D environment. So what we have to do is kind of take all of these letters that we had right here and we're going to copy and paste that above the extrusion. So just select all of them, say Control C to copy them, go stand next to your letters and say Control V to make a duplication of them. And then just drag all those letters above the adjustment layer. And this is pretty important here. And what I can do is right click here on my adjustment layer, head over to label and perhaps give that a different color like forest so that we can kind of see it better here where that adjustment layer is at. And we're doing this so that now everything that will be applied to the adjustment layer will only be applied to the extrusion. 
So let's do that. I'm going to search in the effects controls now for tint. And right here under the color correction, drag that onto your adjustment layer as well. Head over to your effects controls and underneath tint, we can kind of map the white to that reddish color. We can take something like this, just play around with this until you found the correct color. And as you can see right now, that the color will only be affected to that extrusion. Let me just zoom in back again here on that extrusion. Let me just shut off one of these layers here that we've copied. You will then see that the entire letter will be adjusted with that tint. So that's the reason why we've copied that. So let's also make some sort of an animation on that. As the letters are churning, we also want to make sure that the light is kind of flowing over those edges. So I'm going to create a mask. Just take the pen tool and kind of make a mask through the text here something like that. So now only in this area right here, that tint has been applied. Pretty important here is that your mask is applied within that tint. And once you're done with that, I'm going to zoom back in here. We can increase the feather a little bit and you will now kind of see that this color here is kind of flowing over those letters, something like that, pretty cool. And you can also animate this right now. So go back to that adjustment layer and as for the mask expansion here, as you can see, if we kind of change this value, kind of looks like this reddish light is flowing over the edges here. So let's animate that as well. I'm going to set it at a certain start position where we like it to be, create a keyframe for that mask expansion, head over to the ending position somewhere and kind of decrease that. So now you will kind of see that the light is flowing over that. And now there's one last thing with lighting and that is the sides here of the Cinecom letters. But before we're going to do that, we're going to take a very quick break to see the message of the sponsor. Graphical elements like vector images adds more dynamic and visualizations to your instruction videos. In the huge library from Graphics Talk, you can find a wide variation from design elements to illustrations. Because they are vector images, you can just scale them and animate them without any quality loss, and even modify them inside Illustrator to your needs. Just follow the link in the description below to find out more. Welcome back, folks. I'm going to drag that tint effect to one of these letters. Let's start with the C. And uh, let's scroll down. This is, by the way, on the letters here that are above the adjustment layer, so that are those that we've copied. And we're going to start with mapping the white to black, like this. So now you can see that the C is kind of gone. And we're going to start with black here in the beginning as well. So create a keyframe for that. And we're going to go further in time, somewhere right here, where the letters are almost turned around. And then we're going to make that color white like so, and we'll create a keyframe for that as well. So now we can kind of have these letters fading in from the side, and now it looks like this letter is more in a 3D space as the light is kind of changing here. Of course, you want to have this on every letter, so copy that tint effect, select it, hit Ctrl C, then select all the other letters, and hit Ctrl V, or again, Command V and C for the Mac users, and now you'll see that these letters kind of flow in from the darkness. So this here is starting to look pretty awesome, guys. Now let's create these Star Wars around it. So I'm going to hit the Control or Command T to bring up the title or new title window. And let's name this Star, press OK. And I've kind of found this commercially free to use font. You can also find it within the project file that you can download from the description below. You can install this font and then you have the Star Wars font. So I'm just going to type in Star and I'm going to change this font to Star Jedi, and you want to make that a little bit bigger, like that. And the text color itself is going to be black, like that. And we're going to add a stroke around it, so that's going to be an outer stroke. And you want to make sure that this is a red color. Of course, you can also choose something else, like yellow. But in the latest trailer, Last Jedi, it had a red color. The thickness here sits okay at 10. You can also change that to 5 or something, if you'd like so. I'm going to leave it at this and kind of position the star here above the Cinecom letters like that. Then drag in that title into your timeline above everything else. Then I'm going to make a copy of this because we also want to have wars down below that. So hold down your Alt key and drag that title file to video channel number 17 already. And that will make a duplication as well in your project panel. Double click on that, drag down the star text because we're going to change this to wars and reposition this well like that close the titler and now we're going to add this little animation to it as for the ending position this is already correct so i'm going to create a keyframe for the position right here also for the star create, create a keyframe for that as well for the position then i'm going to go back in time and change that position so that it kind of overlaps the title that we've created that it kind of 
opens up here as a title behind it appears. Again, you want to make sure that you are easing in on the last keyframe here. Always important, guys, for the two titles. There we go. So now the title is coming out behind from it. So guys, we're almost done. The last thing that we want to do is going to reposition all this back and also add kind of a little vignetting to it to add some more lighting effect to it. I'm going to select all the layers here within my timeline, right click on them and say nest. And that way we can kind of group all of these layers together and work on all of them at the same time. I'm going to name this title animation and press OK. So it sits right here. Everything sits together. So let's start with the position. Just uh, select that layer, head over to your motion property and kind of reposition that in the middle, something like this. And you also want to animate the scale. So I'm going to create a keyframe at 100%, go to the ending and kind of decrease that scale so that the Star Wars text is kind of flowing to the back. Something like this. Let's play this and see how it looks. Isn't that pretty awesome? Then to add that vignetting to it, there are multiple ways to do that. You can either do it from the color tab here with Lumetri. Um, if you don't have Lumetri yet in your update, you can use the circle effect for that. Just drag that onto that layer and let's head over to the properties. We're going to start by changing that color to black like so. You want to invert that circle and also important that we're going to change the blending mode to multiply. And now we can kind of change the radius here of that uh, mask or vignetting or whatever you would like to call it. You can also display with the center if you'd like so that it sits somewhere in the middle. And then we're going to increase that feather, of course, which is pretty important right here. And that way we kind of have that feathering. Now, the final thing that we have to do is, of course, adding the stars to it. So go back to your project panel. I'm going to drag this title animation here to channel number two because down below that one, we're going to drag in this space background, which is just a picture that I found on the internet like that. And you want to make sure that for this picture in particular, you want to decrease the opacity here a tiny bit because there are a bit too much stars. So there we go. You can also let this title animation fade in. I set a short key to that for the cross dissolve like so. You can also, of course, animate the opacity if you'd like so, but this will kind of let it fade it in and uh, look at those titles. The awesome Star Wars Cinecom film. This is going to be the next film, by the way. This film is going to be about the premier Jedi. And yes, I'm the main role and the main character in that film. So watch out, Luke, because uh, Jordi is coming. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching. You can download this project file for free from our website. You can find a link to it in the description below, or you can also just hit this button right here. Thank you again so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to see more awesome videos like these in the future. And never forget, Stay creative.